Chapter 31 On the Black Heart, or Are You Black? First more, so, you surrendered? Lot looked at the Votagung army who raised the white flag to himself and then came over, not knowing what expressions on his face should be. My own strategy worked. But some are too effective. I just want to get some mentality. But did not expect. The mentality of these people collapsed. Those people, who didn't even bear the pressure, surrendered so quickly. These guys, are they Futi King's subordinates or French? How could it be so easy to surrender? Morgan listened to Lot's heart with a puzzled expression on his face. Is it easy for the French across the sea to surrender? If that were the case, after we occupied the entire territory of Britain, would it be easy to attack France? Well, in that case, Morgan couldn't help smiling. First unify Britain, and then cross the sea to the east to attack France. Finally, go to attack the Roman Empire. Well, in the process, Lot's knowledge was squeezed out. At that time, an empire that is greater than Rome and more glorious than Greece will be established. The plan has been conceived, and the next step is to see how to do it. She gave a small smile. Then, she looked at the Votitian defenders who were kneeling in front of her and Lot on one knee. Hey, what's the situation with these guys? Their faces weren't the kind of frustration that had to surrender because of defeat. On the contrary, it is a kind of surprise. What are they weird about? Lot had the same questions as Morgan. He looked at the defenders who came over and asked, what is your expression? Why, don't you think we are not worthy of your surrender? Are you not Romans? The face of the defender was full of regret. Careless. These people do not look like Romans in terms of equipment and race. Instead, it is an ally like Camelot, not a Roman. Why should I surrender? The castle may not be able to defend how much Rome has black technology, but the difficulty of defending a Camelot army is not too great. After all, staying here is probably not the main force of the other party. Well, can I go back, just as if I didn't surrender? The defending general hesitated, and asked Lot cautiously. What do you mean? Lot tilted his head to the defending general and said with a smile, although things were a bit beyond his expectation. However, this meat has reached his mouth. Is there anything else I don't eat? The general thought for a while and said to Lot, Well. I know the location of His Majesty Votaging's treasure. Can we use this to exchange us for going back to the castle? For so many years, Votagung has blundered, and the accumulated wealth is definitely not a minority. Morgan's eyes lit up. However, Lot's expression only changed for a moment, and then he instantly recovered his calmness. Shall I redeem myself with the treasure? It sounds pretty good. It's a pity that things like wealth only work if they are used. If I die in battle, even if I have too much wealth, it is useless. Wealth is good but it is more necessary to have a fist to protect it. Morgan also recovered his calm in an instant. Ma yeah, when it's critical, it's still a good show. Fortunately, I heard his voice. If you don't know what to say without permission, it is estimated to be laughed at by him again. But what he said is indeed correct. Money is important, but the power to guard it is even more important. But it would be a pity to give up like this. However, it would be a pity if I gave up. Yo, luscious dog, you and me have an idea. So, then start cheating. Lot and Morgan looked at Merlin at the same time. This matter still needs professionals to do it. Merlin looked at the expressions of Lot and Morgan, and suddenly knew what they were thinking. These two people really know that they won't be angry. In normal times, I was stolen while being disgusted. And now if you do something deceptive, then you think of me for the first time. But, I am still willing to do this deceptive job. If you say this, how do we believe you? At this moment, Merlin walked up to the general, stretched out his hand to support him and said softly, you can take someone with us to fetch it. The general looked at the gentle-faced Merlin, and the general felt relieved. Then he looked at Merlin and continued, however, you have to swear that you will put us back in the castle. Yes, as long as you hand over all of Votaging's treasures. I will definitely promise to release you all. I will use my personality as a guarantee. Merlin spoke to the general. Who are you? The general asked Merlin. I am Merlin, the national teacher of King Uther. Merlin said with a smile. However, after he finished saying this, the general's expression instantly changed. Your words, your majesty Votaging told me that you can't believe a single syllable. Sorry, I won't believe your vows. Puff, puff. Lot and Morgan couldn't help laughing. I have to say that this Fu Tiging is worthy of being the biological brother of King Yausa. In terms of understanding of Merlin, it is better than that of King Yausef. Oh, this is really distressing. Merlin pretended to sigh, then pointed to Lot and said, how about he swearing? Okay, Morgan's face changed. We want to eat black. You are asking Lot to break his oath. Damn, Merlin. How vicious are you? At this moment, Lot smiled and said, Well, I can swear too. Okay, Morgan looked at Lot with some doubts. This Merlin's body is a devil who is good at making contracts. But his words say that he wants all the property of Votagung. But not all. This matter is not his decision. We just said that he didn't take it all out, and then there was no problem with killing him. You have a bowl of noodles. But I just said that you ate two bowls of noodles. Just break your belly open and see how many bowls there are in it. Moreover, it doesn't matter if you lose a few bowls of powder. I can completely hold a bottle of washing powder, point to it and say this is the powder you eat. Dot. After listening to what Lot was thinking, Morgan gave him a surprised look. Then, he glanced at Merlin again. She feels so kind now. 
The kind is like a princess in a fairy tale. On the black heart, it is still your black heart. Chapter 32 Is your father so rich too? Second more. Morgan decided not to watch the fate of the calculated castle guard. It is estimated that he is desperate. Falling into Merlin's hands, the two sides are still in a hostile state. If they are not calculated to die, it is absolutely impossible. Lot and Morgan continue to think about their next plans. Morgan asked Lot, Lot. This time we will take Votagan's sight. Will he come here directly like this and hit our ambush? Why not? Lot replied to Morgan, we have taken this castle. However, these kings of Votagan are even more unclear. Since it has been taken down, we can build it even more. A very dangerous state. The decent is himself, the villain is also himself, and the master behind the scenes is also himself. Alas, it's really hard for me. At the same time he thought proudly in his heart. Morgan blinked. Although these ideas are all from you, you seem to have been watching them all the time. The specific implementation, that is. Oh, it's Merlin. You are still too hard, that scumbag. You did almost all the work, and you really did a lot of hard work. It's just a bit worse than us. So, I decided, after this war is over, I need Morgan to comfort my tired body. Well, the kind that stays up for seven days and nights. Morgan gave Lot a roll of eyes in his heart. Hey, luscious dog, you have said that you are tired, so you still worry about not getting out of bed. Are you tired or not tired? Really, if this war does not get a satisfactory result, I will not agree to it, Morgan thought in his heart. At the same time, she picked up a cup of hot water, put some herbs in it. These were learned by Morgan and some local witch doctors in Orkney. It is very good for restoring one's spirit. Laughter. After the drink is over, we will go to the castle of Votagung and have a good rest. Of course, don't give me any messy thoughts then. Rest, just let me go to sleep. I'm not serving anymore. Dot. The soldier who passed the order accomplished his mission very well. While Votagung was planning an attack against the Chalk City, a series of messengers for help rushed in. Your Majesty, it's okay. The Romans came from across the sea and attacked our castle. You, quickly lead the army back to help. But he is inviting various generals to discuss matters. Hearing the words of Lingbing, those people couldn't help standing up. Is this true? How come we have not yet launched an offensive against the enemy, but the Romans are doing it behind us? I heard that Roman men and women are not jealous. Oh, no. They have no faith in non-Romans, they will never let it go if they can find an opportunity to attack us. Do they want to take this opportunity to return to Britain? While everyone was thinking like this, Fu Taiging looked at the messenger, his eyes flashing like electricity and said, what he said is false. As soon as this remark came out, everyone present was stunned. Is he an enemy? One of them pointed to the messenger and asked. The messenger was scared to pee his pants. No, I mean... It's all about King Yuza's plan. I can guarantee that those people are from King Yuza. I guess we want to solve our attack by this means. Romans, now there is no time or energy to manage the British island. Fu Taiging said seriously. Then your majesty, what should we do? The general asked him. Continue to attack. Fu Taiging said lightly. But, our rear? As long as we occupy the Chalk City, we don't need to care about the rear. But our family members are all behind? Well, I see. Fu Taiging nodded slightly. Then... Just when the general thought that Vudijin was about to start deciding to retreat, Votagin continued, wait for the full attack, don't give Yaus the slightest chance to breathe. The generals still wanted to comment again, but at this time they only saw Votagin's cold eyes. It seemed to be facing a vicious white dragon. They couldn't help shivering. Then, I dare not refute Fu Taiging's words for the time being. But Fu Taiging also knew that if the time was long, these generals might not be the same. So, the next offense is to use his greatest strength. He must defeat King Arthur and occupy the entire territory of Britain. Let God I continue. Those guys, no matter how bad they are, they won't lose the castle in such a few days. Fu Taiging thought in his heart. When he thought about it, an army without siege equipment would not lose the castle so easily, even if his subordinates were useless again. Dot. I really didn't put this thing on myself. Give it back to you, I will give you this gold too. Oh, this is not good. You said, you have to give it all. But you still have it on yourself, but that's not good, asshole, you liar. I want to see your leader. He doesn't have this time. You, let's confess your fate obediently. Think about the other people you robbed before, and you know that your ending today is for granted. Lot and Morgan watched indifferently as Merlin pulled the general away for harmless treatment, and then they turned and went to Votaging's treasury. See how much money he has. When they came to the door of the treasure house, two people walked in. A dazzling array of gold, piles of gold. All kinds of pearls and gems are packed into boxes. Then, good guy, does your father have that much money too? Lot looked at the dazzling light and asked Morgan in a daze. What are the habits of dragons? The preference for treasures is one of the most important points. Fu Taiging, who has the blood of the white dragon, also has this kind of preference. And since this is the case with the white dragon, what about the red dragon? My father is not as rich as Votaging. Morgan shook his head and answered Lot. Then, as if she had reacted to something, she asked Lot, you're not going to grab my father. Are you? Lot heard her say this and couldn't help but look towards the sky. Alas, 
The sky today is really blue. Morgan couldn't help rolling his eyes at him, but when she turned her head, she also touched her chin, showing a thoughtful expression. Why don't you find a chance to see my father's treasure house? She thought secretly in her heart. In some ways, Morgan also inherited the blood of the Red Dragon. Chapter 33 is still fair, first more. Lot and Morgan reached a consensus on a certain aspect. The treasure of the White Dragon was plundered, and that of the Red Dragon could not be given up. In this regard, the two people have no psychological pressure at all. How do you say that? The horse has thin hair and fat hoofs, and the son is not a thief if he steals his father. However, the matter of stealing the old man will wait until later, and it is important to deal with these treasures first. Lot ordered his men, come on, let someone hurry up on the ship, and then someone will be sent back to Orkney. Yes, your majesty. The knights from Orkney were shocked when they saw so much wealth. They reacted after hearing Lot's orders. Quickly come over and carry the treasure. While carrying the box, Morgan said to Lot, Lot. Let these treasures be transported back to someone who is assured. Okay, Lot thought. Can't let Kay go. Since he can serve as a steward in the Knights of the Round Table. So the task of escorting the treasure should not be difficult. Uck, laughter. Why did I ask Kai to be the chief steward and let him be in charge of the government affairs of the Knights? Morgan was puzzled when he heard Lot say this. But I thought about it. It seems that Kay is indeed like this. Well, let Kay I lie be responsible for the administrative affairs of the Knights of the Round Table from now on. What Lot said was really good. But since Kay is going to be in charge of internal affairs in the future, who should lead the charge? Do you want Altria to go? Well, let's observe her strength first. While Morgan was still thinking about it, Lot had already spoken. Morgan, leave this to Kay to do. Row. The two people discussed it like this. And after doing this, Lot and Morgan also began to look at the situation in the Votagung castle. Because of the sudden change of owners, the situation here is still very messy. Just where Morgan and Lot passed by, I saw several places where soldiers or local hooligans came to commit crimes. Lot and Morgan shot in time to get rid of these people. But the situation in the city is still not optimistic. It's easy to conquer the world, but it is difficult to govern the country. Lot thought with a sigh in his heart. Morgan nodded in approval. This time I just occupy castle. It's so messy, and if we take down the whole of Britain in the future, or even occupy France, which doesn't even speak the language, what kind of difficulties will we face? Thinking like this, she couldn't help but looked at Lot. Lot, how do you think you can solve the problem here? Want to see what he thinks? Lot was thinking too. If you want to stabilize the city, you must unite some people so that these people can ensure order. So, which part should we let? Should we go find those nobles and let them maintain order? Morgan said to Lot. Noble? Lot shook his head subconsciously. You count on those Huang masters to maintain order and not to go back to votaging. That will only give them more benefits. Could it be that if we want to give them 70% of the benefits, let's only get 30%? Do not make jokes. Of course, you can also let the nobles continue to squeeze the civilians, and they will also obey. But when Vudigen and the others come, these nobles will still choose to surrender. Okay. Although Morgan didn't know what the Lord Huang meant. But listening to his other words, I really feel that there is no problem. I can't get used to those nobles. What's the joke? I am occupying you. But I still want to benefit you in the end. So what should I do? Morgan looked at Lot again. Lot was tangled in his heart at the moment. If there is a choice, I would rather let the civilians maintain order. Their lives are so bitter and they really don't need much. As long as we give them a portion of the benefits, order can be maintained. However, if I do this, it will definitely look deviant. People around may not necessarily recognize it. Especially Morgan. What should she do if she disagrees? She wants to talk about aristocrats. But the greatest aristocrat of this era. Should I do this now? Lot wants the civilians to maintain order, not the nobles. Listening to Lot thinking this way in his heart, Morgan was indeed a little surprised at first. But after another thought, it would be more beneficial for them to do so. Well, although a bit deviant. But I agree very much. In this era, it is estimated that I alone will recognize these. Lot, although I am also a nobleman. But the more important thing is your wife. We will be the co-rulers of Britain in the future. No nobles who dare to threaten us are absolutely not allowed. Lot. Do you have a plan in your heart? Come on, since there is a plan, then go ahead. Morgan watched Lot still struggle, grabbed his hand, and pointed at the entire castle. All the people here are yours. Don't worry about someone daring to make a point, and don't worry about someone coming or failing to implement it. I will fully support you. However, my thoughts are a little bit at odds with other people's thoughts. Lot said to Morgan hesitantly. So, so what? Morgan smiled softly. Then, she continued to ask Lot. Will you harm me? Will you harm your team? Will not. Do you think that your idea is wrong? Or do you think you are a fool? That's not even the case. Lot already understood what Morgan meant. So, Morgan blinked. Then just let it go. It doesn't matter if you kill all the nobles, or you tear down this castle. Lot, you just go ahead and do it. Even if you are a madman, I will accompany you to be a madwoman. But I want to say yes, even if it is a lunatic, we must be the craziest and the most handsome lunatic couple. Okay, when Morgan said this. Lot also nodded vigorously. Doing this by yourself can truly take this place from Fu Taiging's hands. Here, 
it will no longer be the territory of Fu Taiging. Lot asked the army to summon all the nobles and civilians in the castle. Lot stood on the high platform and looked at these people. When I come here, I have to tell you three things first. First, I don't call hello, I am King Lot from Orkney. Second, never miss any bad thing. Third, it's still fair. Chapter 34, Fu Taiging's Grievance in Heart. Second more, the nobles and commoners were stunned. What is he saying? Fair? You're a knight's code to read too much. When you become a knight, don't you always listen to this kind of thing when someone says it? How can there be fairness? These are what the nobles thought. As for civilians, what they think is even simpler. Fairness? That is fairness for the nobles. It has nothing to do with these free people and serfs. Lot looked at the expressions of these people here. Popular people are accustomed to surrendering to the nobles. It is difficult for them to come forward to maintain order. However, these concepts cannot be changed. We can change the class of this society. In this era, he is really a prince and general, and he is really born. Therefore, nobles and civilians must not stay together. Come here, arrest all the nobles for me. Remember, these nobles are used as a bargaining chip to ask for a ransom with Votagung. Lot said to his hands. The nobles were stunned. However, Lot's soldiers followed his orders very much, and under the leadership of Altria, arrested these nobles. The nobles who were really capable of fighting were all brought to the front line by Votagung. The difficulty of grabbing the rest is really too small. After catching these nobles, Lot continued to look at the remaining civilians. These nobles are all people who followed the humble king Votagung. We in Orkney will never admit that these people have possession of the land here. Therefore, we decided to take these lands to Orkney. All. The civilians listened without any reaction. Then, they heard Lot say the next words again. Then, share it with you. Okay. Hearing this sentence, the eyes of the farmers and freedmen present lit up. Divide fields? Give us. The expressions of the civilians froze for a while. Immediately, there was an incredible surprise in his eyes. Sure enough, land is the foundation of farmers. Morgan listened to Lot's words, and remembered it secretly. However, these are not enough and the position of the farmers is not firm yet. Next, we have to do more important things. Let them completely set foot on the thief ship and will not get off. Okay? Still not firm? What should I do? Also, these nobles are not recognized by us. Then, the houses they built are also arrogant. Now, we are going to demolish all these houses, and you bring your hose and follow us to give those houses together. Demolished. Lot continued. Morgan's eyes lit up. Good guy. It turned out to be waiting here. As long as the civilians demolished the noble's house, they must follow us if they are not retaliated against. After all, the field has been divided and can still be returned. You demolish their house, and then you tell them, I will return these bricks to you. Is that possible? Well, I learned it. I learned it. But, the farmers present showed hesitant expressions in front of their eyes. No one dared to move. Lot looked anxious. These farmers still don't have the guts. They are still afraid of the blood of the nobles. Morgan listened in his ears. Blood? Who dares to compare blood with me? Morgan stood up at this moment and said to the farmers, I am Morgan Pendragon, the only daughter of King Camilo Yassa. The natural blood of the Red Dragon is destined to rule the entire British people in the future. Now I declare that the titles of those nobles are invalid. You, feel free to demolish their houses. I, in the name of Pendragon, declare your actions not guilty. The farmers are already very excited. Now that Morgan said this, the flame of desire in their eyes suddenly burned. Dismantle. Under the leadership of some people, these people began to walk towards the houses of the nobles. Lot watched these people's movements and ordered, go and bring people. Don't let these guys do anything other than the demolition of the house. If there is any defiance, rectify the law on the spot. Yes, Aldria nodded. Unfortunately, this era can only do this. If these farmers are not guided, they will only become Lee King or Hong Sukun. Therefore, if scientific and technological thinking has not progressed to a certain level, there are still some things that cannot be done. Lot thought with regret. Morgan felt his regret. Lee Zeking, Honk Sukun, strange names. What kind of era does this luscious dog want to achieve? Not sure. But since he has an idea, then I must help him to achieve reality. Therefore, I still have to continue to increase my strength. For the sake of his and Lot's ideal world, he must at least completely reclaim the British Isles under his command. Although Lot has regrets in his heart. At least he has produced a batch of basic discs now. Those farmers are now the most supportive of Lot's rule. Although these people cannot go to increase the combat effectiveness of Lot's army now. But order can also be maintained. Just don't worry about the nobles coming to ruin. It was finally quiet. Lot was relieved after doing this. Then, he looked at Morgan and remembered that his old husband was still in a dangerous situation. Well, now it's time for Votaging to withdraw. Dot. Three days in a row, Votaging led the army to launch a fierce attack on the Chalk City. This era really lacks siege equipment, but the strength of Votaging is not ordinary people. Several times, he rushed directly to the walls of the Chalk City alone, and slaughtered the defenders. Several times forced King Uther to fight him head on. Fu Taiging's strength is already very strong. King Uther was forced to fight him head on, and ended up in danger a few times. Even, 
His body was severely injured by Vodaking. When it was about to strike down, the defeat in the rear and the surrender of the castle were reported to Vodagung. What did you say? Fu Taiging was really anxious this time. When he wanted to come, he could at least hold on to the old home where they had shot down the Chalk City, and it had actually fallen for several days. The worst result of Yutiking could think of was that the defenders huddled in the city, did not dare to come out at all, and then did not know the enemy's intelligence at all. But now it seems this defender could be even more wasteful, seeing that I can successfully defeat the Chalk City. But now tell me that my hometown is gone. Fu Taiging glanced at the Chalk City. He always felt that if he couldn't take down the Chalk City this time, he would never hope to step into this city again in his life. P.S. Continue the code words, and strive to see a chapter when you get up tomorrow morning. Go to bed early, I work and rest in the underworld, friends don't learn. Chapter 35th, Fu Taiging's Final Charge, Third More. There was a slight change in Fu Taiging's mentality. My own subordinates are really useless. Instead of relying on your own hands to play a role, it's better to do it alone. Bastard. These guys, it, Fu Taiging returned to the camp, and all the generals looked at him. Boss, our backs have been completely scrapped. That really hurts. At this time, don't care whether we are Romans or Britons behind us. If it's done, let's go back and clean up each other. Although Fu Taiging was helpless, it could only be so. He was very angry with this group of worms. How can you occupy Britain? But the problem is, except for this group of generals and lords who want to go home, the remaining tribes and lords, it is estimated that they can only give him all support except help. Last time, we will have the last offensive. If it doesn't work, we will withdraw our troops. Fu Taiging looked at his men, gritted his teeth and said. He had already seen clearly what the people following him were like. It's really not so bad. At this moment, Fu Taiging couldn't help but think of the guy who chose to detour behind his back and then figured out a way to give himself a fatal blow. This method is definitely not what King Yao Zef can think of. So who is this person? Fu Taiging thought in his heart. Everyone watched that Fu Taiging had made such a decision and they wanted to speak out against it. But it hasn't waited for someone to speak. At this moment, Vyudajan waved his hand vigorously. I don't allow you to refuse. If anyone wants to oppose, then come and fight me. If you defeat me, you can choose your actions, singles, with you. We are not stupid. If anyone can beat him, he would have stopped following you a long time ago. Everyone cursed secretly in their hearts. But on the bright side, no one dared to say that. Well, that's the case. Then we are here. Assemble, and finally everyone will show their full strength. Fu Taiging said coldly, everyone was helpless, but they could only choose to be desperate in the end. Dot. Ha, huh, I can finally rest for a while. Sitting on the walls of the castle, King Uther said with a wry smile, although he was already prepared, he had far underestimated Fu Taiging's determination. Votaging's attack suddenly intensified a few days ago. At that time, it was when Merlin said to himself that Lot and Morgan had already attacked Votagung's castle. Under this circumstance, Fu Taiging's offensive turned out to be increasing instead of decreasing. It is hard work for King Yao Zef. If I lose the war because of this, I will really die. King Uther said with a wry smile. Closing his eyes, he was ready to take a rest. The enemy's last attack had just been repelled. At this time, the enemy should also be busy resting. It is impossible for someone to attack immediately after a wave of attacks. It's as if men have sage time. One shot after another is called a machine gun, not a human flesh and blood. I'll sleep for a while. King Uther was about to give orders to his men, but. At this moment he was stunned. How? Huh? Has the enemy attacked again? Damn, is your sage time so short? King Uther thought in his heart. However, he looked at the huge number of the opponent, and the Votigung who charged at the forefront, King Yaoza knew that he was preparing to launch an even stronger attack. Seeing this, King Uther stood up, took the long sword in his hand, and said loudly, Everyone, get ready to fight. Camelot's soldiers are already exhausted, but they are still very loyal to King Yaoza. Seeing that the enemy was about to rush over, they were all ready to fight. Fu Taiging rushed to the front, his whole body turned into pitch black. It seems to be a magic dragon that swallows everything. Even King Asa, he couldn't help taking two steps back out of fear. Two steps, he raised his long sword forward again. Using his own power, he hacked at Fu Taiging. The two sides played against each other. King Asa fell directly at the disadvantage. He was not Votigung's opponent, not to mention that during this period of battle, his body was in a state of exhaustion, and there were still many injuries on his body. Now he is just struggling to support it. King Yao moved a torn arm and said to Votagung, You did this because there is no way back behind you, right? Yes, Votaging thought for a while, then nodded honestly. He swung his sword and attacked again. Fighting with people will never give the other side any chance to breathe. Who actually came up with these plans? While swinging his sword, Fu Taiging was still asking King Yao Zef. Oh, do you think I will tell you? King Arthur grinned. After I died and the Chalk City was breached, Votagung's attack would end here right? Dot as long as time is given to develop, Lot will definitely surpass Votagung. Then he will avenge me. Therefore, what is needed now is to protect Lot. Ha, huh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, 
If I occupy the Chalk City, I will also get the answer. At that time, I will use the double pay you gave him to hire him. Fu Taiging snorted coldly. He originally thought that Asa would either sneer in disbelief or look ugly. However, he didn't expect that after he had finished saying this, Arthur's expression became extremely weird. Seems to be holding back a smile. What's your face? Vota Jing questioned King Yausa. My brother, you can't afford this reward. King Arthur answered with a grin. My elder brother, that is a person who has no children. Where did he go? To double pay lot. Don't tell me, I'll know sooner or later. Looking at the expression of King Yausef, Fu Taiging panicked, swinging his sword and attacking King Yausef. Although King Arthur had seen life and death a long time ago, he would not surrender so obediently. He swung the sword in his hand to fight back. There were a few more battles, accompanied by a soft sound. King Arthur's long sword was broken. Ahem. Blood was spit out from his mouth. He was defeated. There was a bloodthirsty expression on Vudigen's face. Ah sir, in the battle between the two of us, it's up to the winner. With that, he was about to swing his sword to attack. Plan to kill King Arthur in this way. 